Cheerleading is one area where awareness of concussions may still be lacking. Despite the dangers of the acrobatic style of performance and competition that has become popular in recent years. At high schools in New Jersey, cheerleaders are not required to have impact baseline testing, though many do take the test through their participation in other sports. The impact has been harsh for Jillian Shore, a Monmouth County native who suffered a concussion during her second basketball game as a cheerleader at Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, I was at a basketball game and we were doing a pyramid and two of the flyers fell on me, on my head. So, uh, were you told that they fell on your head or do you remember? I remember, it's just that I was, like, didn't really realize like what happened. I just thought I just got in the head in the head, so I just kept going and then I started getting side effects the next day. After her fall, she felt sick, took a few days off from practice, and was not feeling herself. Her mother even noticed a difference in her. I had gone up there uh, for a neuro neurologist appointment and spent a whole day with her, and then I realized, wow, she's really in bad shape. I mean, you know, the, the lights uh, on the, the cars in front of us were bothering her. She, um, she just couldn't concentrate, and she would tell me, Mom, you know, wait, you got to go slower. I'm getting, you know, dizzy, or, you know, we went shopping, which is her favorite pastime, and she wanted to leave. The mall. I says, oh, this is <laughs> this is definitely not my daughter. So um, after that visit, I, I realized that we were, you know, we were in trouble. Now she suffers migraine headaches every day and is unable to complete her workouts at the gym. You get really dizzy and you just feel really foggy and out of it. You don't really feel like yourself. You have terrible headaches and you can't really like move. Did you feel it was getting a little easier to to concentrate to remember things? Is that getting a little bit better? 15, 20 percent better. 15, 20 percent better. Dr. Remsen is Jillian's doctor at the Overlook Hospital Concussion Center in Summit, New Jersey. Yeah, Jillian's a, a, a classical example uh, of a youngster where uh, her symptoms were minimized. Uh, she knew she had a problem. Um, her athletic trainer at school was wonderful, uh, but they had trouble convincing people that she had a problem. And she saw with Jillian, uh, she dresses well and she looks wonderful. And this is what these youngsters often hear. You look terrific. But what you've also heard Jillian say, well, I can't concentrate as well. You know what? I'm watching TV a little bit more now. You know what? I was able to exercise a little bit, not too much. Well, if you just looked at Jillian, would you think that that's the no. case? No, you wouldn't. Studies also show emergency room visits among cheerleaders of all ages have soared over the past decade, including injuries suffered by those who were 13 or younger. These alarming numbers have compacted a brain injury epidemic that is crippling young athletes across the nation. Well, this is a brain injury. It's a traumatic brain injury, and I think that's one of the uh, problems with the term concussion is people assume that you have to recover. You do not have to recover. Uh, we see a, bit, a little bit of a skewed population here, but about 5% of the kids we see it, it don't have their memories fully returned. But given the fact that it's a neurological injury, no different than a stroke or spinal cord injury, it's really day to day. Do most of the youngsters recover? Absolutely. The New Jersey State Interscholastic Athletic Association, the governing body of high school athletics in the state, does not recognize cheerleading as a varsity sport, which leaves certification requirements up to the individual high schools. A study released last year by the Federal Center for Disease Control and Prevention found that cheerleading has the second highest rate for concussions and traumatic brain injuries in high school sports behind only football. The CDC reports that as many as 3.8 million sports and recreation related concussions are estimated to occur in the United States each year. A concussion is a brain injury caused by a bump or blow to the head that can change the way your brain normally works. Even what seems to be a mild bump or blow to the head can be serious. The potential for concussions is greatest in athletic environments where collisions are common. Dr. Jack Knightley is a neurosurgeon and director of the Concussion Center at the Atlantic Neuroscience Institute. One of the reasons that sports has become the test bed for mild traumatic brain injury is because only hockey players, football players, athletes 
want to go back and do it again, as opposed to if you were a car accident, you fell at the work site, if you fell in your gym class, you fell off the jungle gym. People aren't going to do that again. They're not going to fall off the ladder just to see what you got some grins. But a football player wants to get back in the field. A hockey player wants to get back on the ice. A basketball player wants to get back onto the court. So that's why it's so important to return to play and the diagnosis. Nick Guida, a junior at Chatham High School, is a patient of Dr. Knightley. Things that come with it, if you if they're bad enough that it might even like compared to like brain cancer, it does about it does like the same thing to like your brain tissue and everything that a concussion might do over a long time. Chatham is one of a dozen local school districts using impact. This is a design test for managing sports-related concussions. The 20-minute computerized test measures the reaction time, memory, and attention span through a series of mental challenges. Here you go. And this will be for the low-level exertion protocol. Dr. Dr. Joseph Remsen, co-director of the Concussion Center at Overlook Hospital and Summit, talks about the value and importance of the impact test. This particular type of test is objective data. It actually measures certain areas of memory. It can measure how quickly you think. It can measure how quickly you react, similar to, to video game speed. It can measure certain types of memory, visual memory, memories of shapes, um, you know, verbal memory, memory of words. So what happens is, for example, if we have a youngster coming in who's a straight-A student who says hey, they actually feel wonderful, and all of a sudden they take this test, and we show that they have scored in the one percentile or the two percentile across the board and then all of a sudden their mom and dad take a look at those scores and everyone takes a deep breath and pause and then those scores help them understand the significance of the symptoms and issues. The athlete's speed and accuracy on word, symbol and color problems is repeatedly tested to see how well he or she responds as he or she fatigues. It's really hard. <laughs> um, you start off and it gives you these words that you have to memorize, and they're easy words like dog, cat, park, and you have to memorize those. And then at the end, it'll show you um, like different words that weren't on the test, and you have to say like if those words are on the test, if they weren't on the test, and like how they're spelled. And How'd you do? not too well. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't remember any of the shapes. It is now used as a concussion management tool by the NFL, NHL, NBA and more than 360 colleges and 1,200 high schools across the country. An athlete is tested in the preseason first when he or she is healthy to establish a baseline score. After a head injury, the athlete is tested again to see how differently he or she does in comparison with the baseline. It's the only objective test that we truly have to, to show to the youngster, to the family, uh, to the coaches, to everyone that the, the child is having a problem. 